All right, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to Holberton School. Thank you for attending our meetup today. And today, we have Xavier Moretti, who will be talking to us about the IoT. He has over seven years of experience concerning um, wireless engineering, and today he will be giving us the quick and dirty concerning building IoT products. So without further ado, let's give him a warm welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. So yeah, like uh, Afa said, uh, my name is Xavier. Like, uh, like uh, Charles Xavier, you know, the guy in the wheelchair and the uh, bald guy. So that guy. Um, and I'm a mentor here at uh, Holberton School. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about my dog. Seem dis disappointed, guys. No? So this is, this is my dog, Hans, OK? Who, who here has a dog, by the way? All right, so it will resonate even more with you guys. So this is my dog, Hans. He's, honestly, he's the best. He's my best friend. He's loyal. He's funny. He's uh, really you know, good comfort when you need someone, you know? Uh, he has one flaw, though. His one flaw is that he keeps running away all the time. <laughs> I open the door, and off he goes, and it takes me forever to get him back, and it's very, I worry a lot, right? So I don't want to do this anymore, so basically, I had an idea that I'd like to share with you, OK? How about? Instead of his standard uh, pet collar, we built together a collar that will allow me to track hunts. Okay? So a collar where, with a little piece of electronics here on the collar, the collar reports Hans's location on a regular basis. Uh, me, as the owner, I can see the location on an app. He has a long enough battery life so that I don't need to charge the collar all the time, right? And um, he works outdoor, obviously, because this is where Hans runs away, right? And I don't want it to cause any health issues to Hans. It goes without saying. All right, I'm going to stop messing with you. I don't have a dog. Hans doesn't exist. And this picture, and this picture comes from Google Image when you type dog, OK? <laughs> what I do want to do, though, is that I want to use this example, OK, of building a pet collar for a dog collar with a tracking device as an example to show you how to build an IoT product, OK? IoT stands for Internet of Things. Maybe a little bit scary, but I'll show you that it really isn't. All right? Good with you guys? Yeah. So we're going to go through seven steps, OK? Because I want to help you build an IoT product from scratch, OK? So we start with nothing. and. First of all, we're going to define the specifications of our product. Okay. Next, we're going to look at building an actual prototype, meaning a working, functional uh, proof of concept, if you will. Next, we're going to fix the mistakes that we made in the previous step before uh, the prototype becomes an actual product. Next, we're going to design a PCB. If you don't know what PCB stands for, don't worry. I got you. We're going to move to manufacturing. and certify the product, and finally, launch our product. Cool? Excellent. Specs. So specs stands for specifications, OK? So we're going to look at what uh, this you know, electronic piece in the color needs to have, OK? Um, first of all, it needs a host. And if you don't know what a host exactly is, that's completely all right. The host, you can see it as a tiny computer. Okay, a tiny computer, which is where your code will live, your little script will live. Okay, and we'll discuss more later. Uh, next, we're gonna need a GPS module. Okay, again, a GPS module. Um, you may not know what it actually does, but you can see this as a black box that, as an input, receives signal from the satellites, right? And as an output, it will give to my host the coordinates, the latitude and longitude of, of Hans. So we will need to connect it to the host, obviously. Next, we will need a wireless module, 
Okay? Again, black box, which purpose will be to give in an internet connection to our host. Okay? Just so that the host uh, can get, um, basically the GPS module can get signal from satellite. Then in return, the GPS module will give to the host the coordinates of Hans, okay? Where is Hans? And the host will then be able to upload this information to the internet. So far, so good? All right, so this is the basic block diagram of our product. And obviously, we're also going to need uh, in our caller a little uh, battery that can power on our GPS module, our wireless module, and our host. Okay? Good. But now the question is, which wireless technology should we use for our pet caller? Okay, because we have lots of wireless technologies out there, right? You have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Sigfox, 3G, 4G. When I say 3G, 4G, what does the G stand for? Generation, exactly. This is the third generation and fourth generation of cellular technologies, okay? So right now, we mostly use 4Gs on our, for our 4G on our phone, 4G LTE. So what I want to do with you right now is look at three of those technologies, and you're going to help me decide which technology we should put in the pet collar, okay? This is Wi-Fi, okay? Wi-Fi, um, you, you know it all, right? You, you, everybody uses Wi-Fi every day. Wi-Fi uh, from a you know, product builder perspective is quite affordable, okay? It's a three out of four for affordability. What I mean by that is that if I want to buy modules out there, a Wi-Fi module, it's pretty cheap. It's about, I would say, five bucks, okay? So it's pretty affordable for me. My, the battery life, battery life of a Wi-Fi module is pretty good, okay? Meaning, what I mean is that it won't drain the battery of my pet collar too fast. It's pretty optimized by now. Next, we can look at mobility, okay? And what I say by mobility is that if your uh, iPhone is connected to the Wi-Fi and you run away in the street, it will disconnect, right? It's not too good with mobility. And even if I go from my place which has Wi-Fi to my neighbor and which also has Wi-Fi and I can connect to it, the handoff will not be very smooth. I won't be able to hold a good data, data link, right? So mobility for Wi-Fi is not good. Security could be better. It's pretty easy to hack uh, uh, Wi-Fi. And user friendliness, what I mean by that, so user friendliness is a one out of four. What I mean by that is that uh, the out of box experience for a Wi-Fi product is not the best. Meaning if I ship a, pet, a brand new pet collar to a customer, he's gonna have to uh, you know, type in his uh, SSID and then his password, etc. It doesn't work off the box. Does that make sense? Now let's look at uh, BLE. What does BLE stand for? Bluetooth. Bluetooth Low Energy. Good job. This is the latest generation of Bluetooth technology, okay? Bluetooth Low Energy, just as its name says, is very good in terms of battery life, okay? Mobility is, again, not too good. If I'm, on the, if I'm on the, I don't know if you guys have those AirPods, those Apple AirPods that connect uh, to your iPhone with uh, Bluetooth. If you start walking around and you get out of your house, you, it won't work anymore, far from your phone, right? So mobility is not good. Security could be better. User friendliness, again, here, if I get a Bluetooth uh, product, I'm gonna need at the beginning to pair it with a, you know, the Bluetooth uh, uh, transmitter, and that's not that easy, so the out-of-box experience could be a little bit better, okay? And affordability is actually great. It's quite cheap to buy a Bluetooth chip. It's a, 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 a sorry, a Bluetooth module. It's about uh, $2. Now, last but not least, let's talk about 4G LTE. 4G, fourth generation, LTE stands for long-term evolution, FYI. Battery life is not great yet. It's getting better, but it could be better. Um, what, one important point, though, for 4G LTE is the mobility aspect of it, okay? Mobility is great, meaning that your pet collar will remain connected if you're on the road, if you're on the highway, as long as you're within coverage of your operator, right? If you're within AT&T uh, coverage, it will still be connected. 
Okay, so for mobility is great. I give it a four out of four. Security is great. User friendliness, that's quite good in terms of uh, out of box experience. I open my box with my pet collar. It already has a SIM card and it's already connected. Okay, and it works. And affordable is not that great because it's a little bit expensive to get a module. Based on what I showed you, which technology do you think makes the most sense for our pet collar? 4G. 4G, absolutely. Because of the mobility aspect, right? Hans will have a collar with a, uh, a module inside. If this module uses 4G LTE, I can feel good that it's going to keep being connected, right? Even if he runs away in the countryside. Right? So what we're going to put in our block diagram is a 4G LTE module. Okay, so now we looked at the hardware architecture. And we're pretty much good, we have a block diagram. Now how about the mechanical design, my actual pet collar? Okay, after I look at the hardware architecture, I need to look at the mechanical design. So I started this as an idea and I, I drew a sketch, okay, on paper. But it's, it's good to have a sketch, but I need, uh, in order to productize my, my uh, collar, I need to um, put this in a digital format, you know, in an extension, in a format that other people can understand, that I can share with other people, okay? This format would look something like this, a 3D model file, okay? The 3D model file is basically your product with all the different dimensions and all the information about the actual hardware of the product. This uh, model file usually comes in a format called STP, step file, okay? And this is a step file. And you can then import it easily to a 3D printer, for instance, or to an injection molder, okay? And it will create your device. So now we have a hardware architecture, we have a mechanical design. What's remaining is for us to get a software architecture, okay? So, we have Hans on one side here, and we have us, the owner, on the other side. What we want to do is for Hans to upload its location, right, to a cloud, and then uh, whenever I'm wondering where Hans is, I will ask, you know, some kind of cloud, where is Hans, and in return, I'm hoping to get the, uh, Hans's last known location. Right? The question is though, which cloud should we be using? Right? And this is something that has many options. There are many options. I know you guys have been uh, um, working on, uh, on problematics like, like this one. What I, ha what I would like to recommend to you is to use AWS, okay? Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services exists and give, will give you all the tools that you need. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, okay? And I'll get back in detail into why AWS is the right choice for you to build your product. All right, oops, this is wrong, wrong slide deck. So we have a specifications, and now we would like to move to an actual prototype, okay? So we want to build a prototype and something that is important in the prototyping stage is that it is the right moment to make mistakes, okay? The reason it is the right moment to make mistakes is that they are not costly right now. So if for the host you choose the wrong piece of hardware, it's okay, it will cost you another 40 bucks to replace it. But if you have to change this, you know, fix those mistakes later, that will be much more costly. Okay, so let's make mistakes. Let's just get something functional, a proof of concept. Who here has heard of uh, what the Raspberry Pi is? Cool. Nice. So this is a Raspberry Pi. You can pass it along a little, a little bit. Pass it on. Um, the Raspberry Pi, it, it seems scary. And the first time I saw this, I was scared. This is basically a tiny computer, okay? It's just a computer which has uh, some USB interfaces, an Ethernet interface, uh, a bunch of pins here on the side that is called a header, okay? And it has some a flash, ROM, an SD card for storage. This is a tiny computer. 
Okay? And when you get it for the first time, it comes with a fully loaded Linux operating system. So it's basically a $40 computer. You connect it to your display, you connect it to your mouse and your keyboard, and you have a full computer. So this is a great start to prototype our product because we can also, you know, you have access to a, an interface, a graphical interface, you have access to a web interface, you have terminals, you can code in whichever language you prefer and you, you're comfortable in. Okay, so as the host, we're gonna use the Raspberry Pi. The, remember the second piece of a uh, block diagram is the GPS module, okay? The GPS module, I go on amazon.com and I type GPS module. This is what I found. The Neo, the U-Blocks Neo 6M. So I just order it, okay? We'll see how it works later. Uh, this was, this was, uh, I think, $49. It comes with all the kit, and this is uh, $7. So, so far, it's pretty cheap, right? And now the last piece that I want is uh, the wireless 4G LTE module, okay? So that may seem scary, but again, remember, this is just a black box that gives you internet, okay? That gives internet to my Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> When you order a module, a 4G LTE module, it comes with a dev kit, okay? It can look like this, or it can look like that, okay? There's basically a module inside and a dev kit, okay? The module comes plugged inside the dev kit, and what the dev kit does is that it has an antenna here to receive LTE signal. It has a SIM card already in, and the dev kit will give me access to all those interfaces. So it's plug and play, right? So all I need to do is connect my Raspberry Pi to this over USB, and I have an internet connection. It's that easy. And of course, I need a SIM card. Now, I understand, okay, I, I can plug a USB cable from here to the dev kit. You may see that there's a little USB interface. So that's, I, I understand that, but how do I freaking connect the Raspberry Pi to this GPS dev kit that I got on Amazon, right? So, I don't know what you guys do when you have a, pro a problem you don't know the answer to. You Google it, <laughs> exactly. So I Googled it, and I also looked at the documentation that I got by, uh, when I got those two uh, items. Uh, on one end, I'm looking, there's no documentation on this guy. <laughs> So I'm just looking at closely at what it says, you know, the different pins. It says VCC, RX, TX, and GND. No clue what that means. And on the other, on the other hand, for the Raspberry Pi, I'm getting this, uh, uh, this little piece of paper um, with some information. And it looks like uh, this is the, for the header, okay? So it looks like it's actually telling me what each of these pin is for, the role of each of these pin, okay? And uh, looking online, I see that this is a serial connection, okay? So VCC is to supply power, it's, it stands for voltage, okay? Supply power to the uh, GPS module. The second one is RX, which stands for uh, receiving. TX stands for transmitting. And GND stands for ground. Ground is, you know, zero volts, you know, the ground on your outlet, the same thing. And this is called a serial connection, okay? And all I need to do, according to what Google tells me, is connect VCC to this pin that says DC power. Second one is RX, I connect it to TX because the data transmitted by the Raspberry Pi is received by the GPS module, and vice versa. The data transmitted by the GPS module is received by the Raspberry Pi through this pin, and ground is connected to ground because zero volt is zero volt on each side, okay? So that's very easy. So easy that I did it at home for you, okay? You have your Raspberry Pi, you have a little connector, you know, four wires, and you simply connect the pins on the header to the GPS module, and on the other side, I connect uh, via USB my dev kit to my Raspberry Pi, and that's it. And the other cables that you may see is this goes to my TV, so I have a display, I can see my, the graphical interface of my Linux. Here, this goes to key, the, my keyboard, or a keyboard that I stole uh, to my roommate, don't tell him, and uh, this one goes to a mouse, okay? And that gives me a fully functional 
a Linux operating system which can connect to the internet, okay? I don't even need to connect to Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, I looked uh, at Google a little bit regarding this GPS module, and there's one comment, just one comment that I can execute that gives me a full table with the GPS coordinates, okay? I execute this comment from Raspberry Pi, and it queries what's going on in the GPS module, and in return, I get the coordinates, latitude, longitude. So I'm pretty happy right now. I have a functional setup, okay? And we're going to be able to work with that. Now let's, talk, let's, let's um, talk real quick about software part again. I told you I recommend AWS for you for this application, okay? The reason I do this is that they've thought this through and they have all the tools you need, and it's very easy. Um, AWS is a complex product. The two only items I want you to, to learn about today is number one, Amazon Lambda function. Number two, Amazon Dynamo database, okay? The Lambda function is a way for you to, as a developer, to log on to your AWS account, and you're gonna be able to code just two functions, very simple uh, functions in JavaScript. One write and one read, okay? The write function would be a way to take uh, latitude, longitude, uh, you know, data as an input and write it into the database. The read function is a way, is something I can invoke from here to read what's the uh, latest known location of Hans. So it would look something like this. Uh, step one is the dog collar around, around Hans's uh, neck uploads every 10 minutes um, a lambda function write, okay, with uh, as an argument a JSON file. And uh, it has uh, three variables, Hans, the dog ID, the timestamp, April 24th, 5.11 p.m., and uh, the coordinates. And this is, those are the coordinates of uh, somewhere in San Francisco. It sends it, uh, it invokes the lambda function right from the caller. Okay, step two is that the lambda function parses the JSON file and writes in the database. Step three, where the hell is Hans? I open my web app and I invoke uh, the read function with as an argument the dog ID, Hans. And final step, the lambda function will go read into the database and return to me the location of Hans and show it on map. Does that make sense? And it's very easy. You don't have to rebuild this whole product. It's already ready. Seriously. It's, it's, AWS is used a lot in the IoT space. All right. Not falling asleep yet. You're good. I have candies for those who are uh, paying attention, by the way. <laughs> Fixing mistakes. So right now we have a Raspberry Pi, and we have a dev kit that is somewhere here and we have a GPS module, and we have a big USB cable to connect things together. This is, this is fine because it's prototyping phase, right? But you have to be aware that IoT, so Internet of Things products are a combination of hardware and software, okay? If you do software products and you deploy them on the field and you have a million users and you find a bug, it's a pain but you can easily fix them by pushing a software upgrade, okay? If you have a million devices out there and there's an issue on the hardware, it will be very expensive to fix those issues, okay? What, we can, what you can say as a rule of thumb is that the cost of fixing an issue in hardware grows exponentially with the age of the product, okay? If I'm at the prototyping stage here, it's not too costly. I buy another microcontroller or Raspberry Pi for 40 bucks. If I, at the end, I'm deployed and I need to fix something, this is gonna be extremely expensive, extremely costly. So this is why we want to make, fix mistakes before we productize our prototype, yeah? So I'm thinking of um, three improvements of my prototype and I'm happy to hear if you have any others, okay? And again, there's candy. Improvement one, the script that runs on the host right now is extremely light, okay? It's one function to query the GPS coordinates from the module, 
and one function to invoke the right lambda function to talk to the AWS cloud. That's it. Do I really need a full operating system that runs on Linux to do this? Absolutely not. Raspberry Pi 2 with Linux operating system is an overkill. It's expensive, it takes space, and, uh, and it, 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 takes, it will consume a lot of energy as well from my battery. I don't want that. I'm going to take a much smaller microcontroller that can run this very simple code. Okay? For instance, an Arduino. Improvement number two. I mentioned earlier that uh, Hans needs to upload its coordinates every 10 minutes. Should we really do this? At some point, you're going to need to ask yourself where you want to be in the trade-off between a very accurate Hans that uploads its location every minute, but that kills his battery very fast, or uh, uploading a, uh, your coordinates once a year and keeping a very long battery life. Okay? So this conversation needs to happen. Improvement number three, it's important for you to turn off the GPS module and turn off the LT module when you don't use them. Okay? When you don't need them. So this will increase a lot your battery life. And what we could improve, another way we could improve the, the product is by adding a proximity sensor, okay, in the, the color itself, so that whenever you put it on Hans, it detects it that it's being worn, it wakes up the, ho the whole system, and then you start uploading coordinates. And only when it's being worn, the system needs to be on, right? Another uh, and last point is that uh, I could also put a motion sensor, because maybe I put the color on Hans, but Hans goes to sleep, goes to sleep, right? And I don't want, there's no point uploading coordinates and using my battery if Hans is not moving, right? The motion sensor will detect when Hans is moving and immediately turn on the whole system and then start uploading the coordinates once every 10 minutes. Yeah, does that make sense? Do you guys have any other suggestions? Yeah? That's true. That's very true. Yeah, so you would need a way to um, turn it on remotely, though. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. So you would need the caller to listen to the internet once in a while, right? Yeah. Maybe wake up every, by default, uh, wake up himself every 20 minutes, ask to the network, hey, do you have anything for me? And if, you're, if I'm panicking and I'm looking for Hans, he will ping it, wake up the whole system. And, uh, that's, a, that's a very good design, actually. That's a great idea. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. Uh, candy, you can come uh, redeem your candies later. <laughs> Good job. All right, we're making progress. Now, this is, the, this is the part where you're gonna fall asleep, probably. PCB design, okay? PCB stands for? Printed circuit board. Printed circuit board, candy here. It's uh, basically when you see the, um, the Raspberry Pi, right? This is a printed circuit board. Okay, usually when you get a computer, there's a casing around it. You don't see the PCB itself. A printed circuit board is usually green. It's a fiberglass layer on which you have components and they're connected by a little trace on it. It's that simple, okay? And you have PCBs in any, elect any electronic device, you just don't see them, okay? What we want in this step is go from our prototype to an actual PCB, you know, a much smaller PCB that I can fit, that I can, I can that put in my collar, in the collar for Hans, and I'll have a product. So, you remember, we have this uh, block diagram. We have, we decided on using this GPS module and let's say this Arduino microcontroller and this uh, a sequence LT chip uh, module and then a battery, okay? And what we want to try to do is to go from this block diagram to a PCB, okay? This is where we want to be. So where you start is, you remember this um, 4G LT module that is in the dev kit somewhere, right? This module, when you buy it, it will come with some documentation. One of those documentation because you see, there are all those pins here in the back of the module. You don't really know where to connect them. The documentation, the main documentation that will come with the module is called schematics, 
OK? Schematics simply tells you which, uh, what each of these pins mean, OK? So for instance, I don't know if you can see here, but there's the first pin here is called network LED. Maybe you know what it means, maybe you don't. In the user guide, you will see that network LED simply means that you can connect to this pin in order to have an LED turn on when this is connected to the internet and off when it's not. It's optional for me to use. If I don't want to use them, I don't use it. Okay? And once you have the schematics of each of those four components, you just connect them together and you build the schematics of your full product. Okay? And then, so this takes a little bit of, um, this takes a little bit of experience, okay? But this is really pretty simple. It's like playing Lego. And then there are some software. The most popular is called Eagle. Eagle uh, will allow you to, from the schematics, get a file called the layout file or Gerber file, okay? This is basically, it might remind you of a, bl a blueprint of the bank when you tr want to rob a bank, right? The Gerber file, uh, shows the exact placement of all the components, right, on the PCB. So if this component is at the top left of my Gerber file, it's going to be at the top left of my PCB. And it will also uh, generate another document that is called bill, uh, bill of Materials, BOM. It's just a shopping list with all the components. One resistance, 20 kilo ohm, and this is the reference number. Yes, sir? What's the name again of the software? Eagle. Eagle is the most popular. But I think there's another one called uh, Easy EDA that's also, I think it's free. And great tutorials online on this. Um, cool. So we have a Gerber file and we have a bill of material. Good job. Two steps to go and we're done. Step five is manufacturing, okay? Because now we have a digital file for the layout, a digital file for the schematics uh, for the um, 3D modeling, you remember? And it's very easy, this step, actually. You're just going to take those three documents, the bill of material, the Gerber file, and the step file, STP file. You're going to give it to a manufacturer. And the manufacturer is going to give you, in return, a PCB and the actual color. So we have a product. Why, you ask me, do we use a manufacturer, three reasons. First of all, the know-how, okay? He knows what he's doing. Some people may even say he knows the drill. Thank you. PD love, thank you. Thank you. Candy, all right. <laughs> totally, two candies. Reason number two is those are freaking expensive machinery, okay? If you want to do it yourself at home, the first component you create will cost you millions. The second will be cheap, but the first one will be very expensive. And obviously, he can get components at very good prices from his suppliers. He has a whole ecosystem of suppliers that will give him uh, the microcontroller, the module, et cetera, at much cheaper price than I can get them on uh, Amazon.com. OK? Good job. So now we have um, actual products. We have a PCB and a color. OK? There is an important step that you should not miss and that you should actually consider during the whole design phase. Okay, is the certification. In the US, you cannot just take your PCB, put it in a, in a color, ship it to your cu first customer. Okay, this is illegal. You need to ask yourself this question. Does my product transmit wireless signal? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Because it does, in the US, let's say we want to sell to US customers, you have to go through a, steps, a step called FCC certification. Federal Communication Commission certification. What those guys are going to check is they're going to take your product and they're, they're going to make sure that the product does not transmit outside of the frequency bands where it's supposed to transmit. Okay? And they're also going to check uh, that it doesn't transmit power too high that could hurt people. Okay? There's a maximum level uh, authorized. So once you have your FCC certification, You ask yourself, which wireless technology? You guys remember? 4G LTE. And because it's uh, 4G LTE, you ask yourself another question. Which operator? So AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon. Let's say we, we use Verizon. 
Okay? Because you use Verizon, you're going to need to go through the Verizon certification. Okay? And then you are market ready. Good job. By the way, taking one step back, Verizon certification will be pretty light if you are using in your product a pre certified module, okay? Which is the case for the one that you have with you right now, which, which means that the module was uh, pre certified by the manufacturer of the module with Verizon. But now that we have a full product with a certified module, but also your own electronics that you added, your own antenna and stuff like this, uh, Verizon needs to double check and do an incremental, you know, small. Uh, amount of testing on top of it to make sure that it's still okay. Your device is still meeting the Verizon requirements. Okay? And then you're market ready. Don't try to do this yourself. I mean, you're not even allowed, actually, to do it yourself. You need to seek out an accredited lab. Okay? They will take care of the FCC and uh, Verizon certification for you. We're done. Product launch. Congratulations. And we can now track Hans. I'm not too good at Photoshops and, and stuff, but this is the best I could, I could do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Candy? <laughs> good job. Uh, three takeaways before we wrap it up. IoT. The, so the Internet of Things is a big space, okay? Uh, what, we, what I told you about today is a small subset of what IoT can mean, okay? You guys, um, you're more developers, so maybe you'll be working on the AWS side, you know, and you'll be processing Maybe the, you know, you'll be working for the company that builds those pet colors, but you'll be working as a, uh, on the data science side, meaning you receive millions of data points every day, and you make sense of those points in order to improve the customer experience, or in order to figure out when should the color be turned off in order to save a little bit more battery, right? So, but wherever you work in IoT, it's always good to know a little bit about the product side of things, okay? And the IoT products. And this pet collar is uh, an example of IoT products. Second point, don't reinvent the wheel, okay? Just like when you do your software projects, you use existing libraries, just is the same for hardware. Just use existing modules, okay? Don't try, to, uh, don't try to build everything from scratch. The company that builds those phones, they are an integrator. As far as I know, they don't build their own products. It's mostly integration. And I really think this is easy for you, considering your whole Burton street smart developers. OK? That's it. Thank you very much. You can, uh, you can always contact me if you F feel free to reach out to me if you, have any, if you want to chat about any cool IoT project. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. How much time? Uh... We have plenty of time. Cool, 20 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Uh, this doesn't work. Mm. Oh, for the questions. Yeah, so typically uh, during the whole kind of the prototype phase, uh, how, like, what are the costs, in term, not, not, not the upfront cost for this hardware, but what are the costs for uh, hardware maintenance, uh, uh, AWS cloud maintenance? The Verizon 4G LTE, like, is that, is that like typically like 100, 200 bucks, 200 dollars a month, or? Oh, for the SIM card? Yeah, just yeah. Yeah, just yeah. All the services that you need. Well, um, AWS cost zero dollars. I think you know AWS. They smartly designed their project to attract you know new people, and they charge you uh, as uh, it's proportional to how much data you use. So if it's zero, it's, you pay zero. Um, SIM card is a good point. And it's something I did not mention. When you want to build a 4G LTE product, you need a SIM card in every one of your products, right? So you need to pay recurrent fees every month. And this is indeed why the cost, you know, in my, you remember in my radar chart, this is the reason why I showed the cost of 4G LTE much higher than Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well, because this needs to be considered. To answer your question, uh, uh, for small IoT products, it's $1 per month per product, SIM cards, considering the very, a very small amount of data. Right, yeah. Stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But at, at a, once you're beyond a certain volume, okay. So AWS zero SIM card, uh, okay, ten bucks a year, some twenty bucks a year. 
Raspberry Pi, $49.99. Module, $7. And uh, the dev kit got it from my company, so I don't know. But yeah. Does that answer your question? Tell me. So you were mentioning at the end about uh, like using a data scientist to like check like when you would want to use, like checking all the data points, would you do that during the prototyping phase so you could see when the best time to turn it on and off would be and like power management? Or would that be more of like something you would patch on, patch into your software later on? Um, I think that's a good question. I, I, I think it will only come later on because it's just, you know, data science is a lot of about statistical uh, analysis, right? So you need a very high number of, of data points in order to really make sense because every user uses the product a little bit differently, right? And what, you, what makes sense is when you start looking at a million users, you start seeing some clusters, right? So uh, the data science part comes a little bit later. We have a data scientist from Apple here. Was that a good answer or? <laughs> Thank you. I guess I have another question too. So this is, because we're using 4G and you have so many certifications you have to go through, yeah. It, does that make the like cost to get to market like pretty like would that make your product like a pretty costly product to manufacture? As well as like considering how small it is, that's also going to be like a man the manufacturing cost is probably going to be higher than two, right? Well, the manufacturing cost is not really impacted by the fact that you have to certify. Well, well sorry, I meant like total product cost. Total, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Total product cost will absolutely increase. That's a good point. The, it's a it's not negligible, the, the price of a, of a certification. Uh, if you do FCC and Verizon certification, it will cost you maybe $20,000. And that's assuming you know what you're doing and you don't realize that you made a mistake on your design in the middle of the certification. Because in that case, you have to restart and resubmit from scratch. And do you, when you're certifying, do you certify just like one unit or is it like, does it cover your whole products? So like every product you're shipping out? You, you certify about 10 units. But you're supposed to not change the software after you certify. Okay. See what I mean? Yes, please. Just wondering about the security of the the transfer of the of the of the data. Yeah. Is this already all encrypted and everything? It's already encrypted encrypted by default if you use uh, AWS. It's also also has its own level of security if you use LTE. Um, but you can always. Uh, you know, in your application layer, you can always add more layers of security. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Got a question back here. Uh, I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How much uh, research went into seeing uh, if this product was attempted by anybody else? Oh, yeah. Good point. Very good point. So I tried to fit this presentation in 40 minutes, so I skipped many things. Absolutely. This is a very good point. At the beginning, at the business level, you need to justify that this product makes sense and the investment makes sense, etc. So I skipped over all the market analysis part and uh, competitive analysis and see who else is doing this and how, what's the market segment I can get with th this type of pricing, etc. So th that's a very good point. And if you do some research online, you'll see that this product exists already for Maybe not exactly connected over LTE, maybe it's connected over some other stuff, so maybe your product will be a little bit better, but yeah, I completely skipped this, this part. Good point. Yes? What's the cost of producing the PCE design? With the manufacturer? Yeah, yeah, for that particular design. I can only give you a ballpark, but the problem is that usually when you work with manufacturer, the, the price will go down with, with higher volumes, so, um, maybe it will cost, the first PCB will cost you 100 bucks, 200 bucks, um, but then it will go down to, uh, you know, only one or two dollars uh, later on once you produce, you know, a million devices. So every iteration of the prototype on the PCB that you ever will cost you 100 Yeah, absolutely. And again, this is something that I skipped, but it's a good point. It's not, it's not just one way like this. You don't do prototype and then you manufacture, you fix your mistake and then you, you uh, manufacture your product types. Right? You build a prototype, then you get it manufactured, you get a first PCB, you test them, you test them on the field, and that's how you find mistakes, right? Um, so indeed, the first PCBs 
are a little bit expensive, but you can always work out a deal with your manufacturer and you know, manufacturer committing that later on you will use him to uh, pro uh, manufacture your old product. Yep. Hey, I had a follow-up question in terms of doing the market research for existing solutions. Yep. Do you know of any good resources or like publications or like blogs that you like following that kind of comes out with new? That covers the whole general. space of IoT, not just this? Yeah, or? Uh, no, no, I'm okay. sorry. No worries. I'm sorry. Thanks. If I think of something, I'll, I'll send it to you. I have another one. Yep. Um, oh, I just forgot it. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. I do have a question. So why choose 4G over 3G? Because 3G would be cheaper, and it would uh, the coverage is almost as good as 4G, right? 3G will not necessarily be cheaper. Um, you're, are you talking about the module cost or the SIM card cost, the S data plan? Both, I guess. Well, uh, OK. Let me put it this way. 3G, depending on the market where you are, you know, like you're in Japan or Korea or the US, the 4G market is very mature. And 3G is going away sooner or later. If you want to future-proof your device, it's good to invest, use a technology that will still be there in five years, right? Otherwise, uh, five years from now, uh, all your pets will get lost. Um, the second point is that this is a little bit uh, technical about 4G, but 3G. There's only one 3G. Okay, they've been um, they've been evolving uh, as 3G uh, got more mature. But in 4G, in LTE, you have actually different subcategories. I don't know if you ever heard of category four, category one, category M. But within 4G LTE, you have different uh, kind of lightweight, uh, you know, heavyweight. But if your application only uses a little bit of data once in a while, you can get the lowest category of LTE, meaning that it cannot meet very high throughput, but it's extremely power optimized. You know what I mean? Because LTE may be an overkill if you only do a few kilobits every month, right? LTE allows you to uh, browse uh, GoPro HD videos on your iPhone. We don't need this for our pet collar. We just want to upload a few bits, right? So LTE, within LTE, you may be able to find a category that is exactly tailored for your product, and that's why I think 4G LTE will be the best choice, the better choice. So in terms of the programming side of things, is it mostly kind of going to be like C? It's going to be some sort of assembly language, or like? Uh, where? Because uh, at the, I'm, I, I'm assuming at the Raspberry Pi level, probably probably C, right? And then when you get to the microcontroller level, I guess some, some sort of assembly, or I have no yeah, idea? Yeah, exactly. Well, they have some, yeah, it depends which microcontroller you go with. The Raspberry Pi, for me, I did it in Bash, Bash. Linux Bash. Bash. Yeah, it's because it's, it's such a simple application, right? Right now, all the intelligence is on the cloud. Yeah. All the data processing right now, you, you see what I mean? Yeah. The pet color, the pet color runs on battery. I'm not putting any heavy lifting on the color itself. I'm giving it the minimum amount of uh, intelligence. It uploads the data, and on the cloud, I have my big computers uh, connected to an outlet, and then here I can process the data and make sense out of it. So bash on the, on the Linux uh, Raspberry Pi. And if you go uh, with, a, with a smaller microcontroller, it will come with a dedicated language, like an IDE that you can type on your PC and then compile and push it to the microcontroller. So it doesn't have an operating system. It's just a boot run. And as you turn it on, it will execute the code. That's that simple. Uh, so you were able to, quote, outsource a lot of things to the manufacturer sure. and to Amazon. Uh, what, based on what you presented us, what specialized uh, domain knowledge did you have to have to see this project through? As like, I know you pulled up the 3D imaging right. software. Um, so your question is, uh, what kind of knowledge do you need in order to? Yeah, for this up? particular project for you, and how would that prevent somebody off the street? Um, uh, realizing an idea they have. Well, that's kind of the point of my presentation. I don't think, I think it gets, it's scary when you say IoT and people don't really know what it means, but uh, it's actually accessible for anyone. You know, I mean, of course, 
if you really want to start a serious IoT company, you will need to hire, you know, a, some, guy, some guy who can do the, a mechanical engineer who can build a 3D model, make something nice, make something robust, a good a sexy industrial design, you know? Because the product itself is important. And I, with me and my engineering, you know, absolute no art taste whatsoever, you know, I'm an engineer, I'm going to build a very ugly uh, color. So you need artists, right, to, to build those things. And then um, to convert, to go from the block diagram to schematics and then schematics to layout, those, this also requires a little bit of expertise of uh, electrical engineering low level. So it's not fully something that you can do yourself, but if you outsource a little bit here and there, you can, you can do it. Tell me. So definitely the GPS module is really cool and same thing with the wireless module. Yeah. Do you recommend or did, have you had fun with any other like cool modules that you just made something cool with? Or just, I, don't uh, know, I know there's probably a lot out there, but. Uh, so on the LT, on the LT side, um, I'm biased because I work for a company that builds LTE modules, and the one that I show you is the one that my company builds and designs. So I'm I'm not going to give you a neutral answer on this one. That's fine. But uh, so I'll give you the non-neutral answer. You should use sequence. Sequence is really the best. <laughs> um, and on the GPS side, um, I. I have not done competitive analysis enough to tell you which one is the best, but the one that I used was okay. It's not so much like the, the brand, more like, you know, other types of modules. All right. That might be really cool, like okay. GPS, I don't know, like, I don't know, like weather sensing? Is there weather sensing modules? Oh, yeah, so other sensors and things like this? Okay. Um, what would you recommend to anyone? Yeah, I think, I don't know too, too well the manufacturers of sensors, but you can buy dev kits. Um, like that come with the Raspberry Pi, but also like the full dev kit, like a bunch of sensors with like a breadboard, you know what I mean? Like so you can connect stuff, connect your Raspberry Pi and play around with it. Um, but yeah, again, I mean, it wouldn't make sense to have a weather sensor in our pet collar here, unless you want Hans to tell you I, I, more I, about the weather, right? I, I, this, 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 uh, test case, this in general, yeah, in general. Any, any, any yeah. Yeah, accelerometer is very easy. It's very convenient, you know, for a, a consumer product. Um, um, you have you have tons of little sensors, so I'll, uh, but I think there are good resources. I can send you uh, like a link to a good website with lots of different sensors. Yeah, if you're interested, because is this something that you're actually looking into, like a building IoT product? That sounds fun. Just a GPS. Good. Just a good. That sounds awesome. Then that was a successful presentation. Anything else? Yep. Um, you can use this methodology for make another IoT product, like the one like the host and the, um, all the things on the. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Try to make it, make it as generic as possible. Um, I mean, for so there are some things that are specific to this product. Okay, like for instance, the fact that it's embedded. Meaning embedded it means that it's not connected to an outlet on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. So because of this, I'm really trying to make it as lightweight as possible, as small as possible. Yeah. But it really depends on your application. I also want it to be, you know, as really tiny because I want it to be almost invisible on the color. Um, but if you build, let's say, an IoT product that, uh, like a smart meter, I don't know if you know what it is, but you just connect it to your power meter so that it just reports to PG&E how much electricity you've been using. This, is, this stays at home, no mobility is needed, and it connects to an outlet. It can be f big and ugly, you don't really care. No. So maybe there's no need to pay a premium to get this very small 4G LTE module, or the very small module of any kind. You can get ugly and, and ugly stuff, but efficient, and put them on your wall and nobody will ever see it. And also, uh, when you use like an Arduino micro microcontroller, yep. Um, don't you have to put it in the open source? Oh, I mean, you don't have any problems to to um, sell that product with a microcontroller uh, okay. of Arduino? Okay. You mean like using a third-party microcontroller and then sell yeah. it? Because uh, an Ar the Arduino is like an open source. Uh, uh, that's thing. true. Yeah. That's very true. Okay, you're very well informed. 
Um, <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm not 100% sure, okay? But I think because Arduino is open source, there's no problem with uh, selling products that contain an Arduino microcontroller. But you can, like, patent the product? Sorry? You can patent that product with the, micro, the yeah. Arduino microcontroller? I, I think so, because uh, your product is a combination. It's not just an Arduino, right? You're combining with other products. You're writing software on it. Uh, but don't take my word for it. I'm not 100% sure, actually, okay. about the answer. That's okay. a good one. This is definitely something that you need to look into before starting because to sell. Yeah. You would need legal advice from somebody in the industry, and I don't have those uh, these skill sets. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Hope you have it. <laughs>